How to build a Blackgate Sweet Pea 5 inch gauge locomotive, part 67. Making and threading a new piston rod is simple and very accurate if you use a multi size collet chuck, or any type of collet chuck for that matter, they are more accurate than a standard lathe chuck. I need to thread both ends of this piston rod, therefore, I also need to remove the part from the chuck and refit it the other way round. By using a collet chuck, you can remove the work from the chuck and refit it. You can't really do this accurately with a three jaw chuck, unless it's a special grip true three jaw chuck. I just want to take a moment to show you this excellent book. I'm using it for reference all the time on this rebuild. All of the technical drawings are in the book, as well as a lot of instructions telling you how to do the job, which is very useful if you are a beginner. Please note that the dimensions and fixings for a miniature locomotive are usually in Imperial, which is fine for me, that's what I was taught at school. So I can easily add the dimensions together. 5 eighths plus 3 and 3 quarters plus 3 quarters equals 5 and 1 quarter of an inch. The good news though is you don't really need to add these fractions together. Just machine the two ends separately, leaving a gap of 3 and 3 quarters of an inch for the unthreaded part of the piston rod in the middle. But don't forget though, the thread is three quarters of an inch at one end and five eighths at the other. And that is why I'm making another piston rod. One of the original piston rods was machined wrongly. To be honest though, I could have worked around this using the existing components, but I want this thing to be right. Sadly, the piece of stainless steel I found in the last episode which was very accurate at exactly a quarter of an inch, was a stainless steel tube, which is no good for this job. I've recently made a video all about my Bernard multi-size collet chuck. It's in my workshop topics collection. These videos are well worth a look. They're full of useful information. And if you want to see this part running a bit slowly with explanations, all you need to do is watch the video called Using a Multi-Size Collet Chuck in the YouTube playlist called Workshop Topics. This old Bernard multi-size collet chuck is really good. And I do see that there are a few for sale on eBay and they're about half the price that they used to be. Time now to start the job. And first of all, I'm doing this wrong. I need to show you one or two pitfalls when it comes to threading stainless steel. The first one, of course, is never let the tool rub on the work because stainless steel work hardens very quickly. It's generally okay with carbide, but with high speed steel, it will just remove the edge almost immediately. What I'm trying to show here is what happens if you leave the part oversize and then thread it. Over the years, I've memorized a lot of data, but as I get older, if I forget, I will use different methods to make sure the sizes are correct. I'll show you one shortly. The first thing I'm doing wrong, I suppose, is not using a tailstock die holder. I only have a couple of those, but I've got a lot of die holders of this type, so I fit the dies into these, and I use the tailstock chuck to keep everything square, and I usually get good results. And this example is no exception, except the diameter of the steel that I'm threading is slightly too big. So what's happened is the die has knocked the tops off the threads. I'll clean it up and let you have a look. You can see very clearly in this clip, even though the nut is a really good fit on this thread, the threads are malformed, the outer edges are flat, and this is no good at all. So back to the drawing board, and I'm going to start again. By the way, I did do this on purpose, honest. I fitted another length of stainless steel into the collet, and here I'm marking it just over three quarters of an inch from the end. This is only an approximate starting point, but it needs, of course, to be oversized. This time, I am not going to make a thread like this. Although it works, it looks terrible. I need to know what the size of bar needs to be to get a perfect 2BA thread. I can of course consult charts, look on the internet and look in books to find out the right size, but there's a much quicker and easier way. Measure the diameter of a professionally machined 2BA bolt. Beware though, a lot of bolts are rolled 
and these are not as accurate. But this 2BA bolt has been machined, and its tolerances are high. I don't need to re-show the machining sequence. The only difference is, this time, I turned the shaft to the correct diameter, and cleaned it up with some wet or dry sandpaper. The threading operation, as with other things in this video, are running at a higher speed. You can still clearly see what's happening, but increasing the speed of the video just saves time. Unfortunately, this die still slightly flattened the ends of the threads. I think it's faulty. But the threads are much better than in the previous attempt. What I'm doing here is centre drilling the end. You'll see why I did this in the next episode. Once I cleaned up the thread though, it seems to be OK. Near enough for jazz and rock and roll. Here's the one I've just made against the one that was already made, and as you can see, they are quite a good match. The threads do not go all the way up to the shoulder of the main diameter of the rod. This is unimportant, because when I thread the pistons, I will recess the pistons to the diameter of the threaded part, a tiny bit in at each end. Once again, you will see me doing this in the next episode. I'm happy now that I have two piston rods that fit perfectly into the glands and are the right lengths. To conclude this video, here they are again. A pretty good match, I think. That's it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.